What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Heights Podcast. Today we have on Trey and Mari Wagner, who are the co-founders of West Coast Catholic. And Mari has launched a podcast, is the host of Everbee Podcast, right? Mm -hmm. So we're excited to have them on. So just first, Trey and Mari, maybe share a little bit more about who you are, how you guys started West Coast Catholic, and what you guys are up to. Yeah, thanks for having us, Brendan. We always love chatting with you. So this is going to be a fun convo. <laughs> yeah, we're excited to be here. Um, we started West Coast Catholic in 2019, and it all really started back in 2018 when I started my personal Instagram blog. Um, really, it was just in the midst of a reversion that I was going through in my life, and the Lord placed it on my heart to share how I was choosing to live my faith out in college um, as a young 20-something-year-old. Um, so I started doing that on an Instagram page called West Coast Catholic. Uh, I grew up in the West Coast and kind of felt like I didn't really ever have a lot of Catholic community out there. Hence why I chose to be the West Coast Catholic to represent um, that side of the country. And eventually it just, it just kept growing. It continued to grow. And about a year into having this blog, Trey uh, gave me a handmade rosary that he made for my birthday. And the beauty of that rosary and the intentionality with, with which I knew that it was made it drew me to prayer so much that I kind of unlocked like a spiritual life hack, like beauty, <laughs> beauty draws us to prayer. Um, and it is a transcendental, so it's true. And there's something about beauty that just lifts our eyes and our souls and our minds to God. And so I was so drawn to the rosary just through the beauty of the item. Um, and that inspired us to start making rosaries uh, to bless the people that were following along on our Instagram. And at the time, we were also discerning engagement. And so we also may have been trying to save up for a ring at the same time. And so we thought that selling a few rosaries, blessing some people with beautiful prayer tools and then hopefully saving up for a ring would help set us up for the future yeah. and the lord had very different plans i mean the lord uh just continued to bless those rosaries and what we thought would just be selling a few rosaries as a one-time thing um just kind of kept continuing to snowball into what it is today six years later and now we're a full-on catholic lifestyle brand and it's Trey and I's full-time work so yeah it's our ministry the Lord has blessed us abundantly, and it's so much fun. So mm -hmm. much fun working with now wife. Right, so, <laughs> spoiler alert, we did get married. <laughs> yes. It worked out great. How long have you guys been married now? <laughs> Three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Three and a half years. Yeah. And it all kind of really started when Trey made that rosary. Is that, <laughs> am I right in hearing that? made one rosary and she's like oh my gosh a catholic man i can't let him go i always prayed, i always prayed for a catholic boyfriend and i didn't know that that's what it would be like but when he gave me that rosary i was like this is this is what i prayed for <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i was looking at your guys's website right before this actually and i loved uh the little saying experience a foretaste of heaven yes and so maybe could you just share briefly about that and how that reflects what you guys do at West Coast Catholic? Yeah, that was the, the tagline that we came up with for this brand that we created. Uh, and really what it is, is experience a foretaste of heaven. So what is heaven? Heaven is ultimately communion with God. And that is what we're trying to inspire everybody here uh, through our products and through our lifestyle goods and mm -hmm. prayer tools that we sell is to inspire a prayer life within the consumer. And so, uh, through prayer, we're able to obtain communion with God, which is like a little foretaste of heaven. It's because heaven is communion with God. Prayer is communion with God, a way that we can experience that little, little taste of heaven here on earth. Mm -hmm. And so everything that we create is, uh, created with that intention in mind to inspire prayer to our customers. Yeah. Whether it's a you know, actual prayer tool, like a rosary or a devotional or holy water, or whether it's a lifestyle item, like a belt bag or a necklace or an accessory, it is all um, intentionally designed with like a faith infused um, intention with the design and something in it, right? Whether it's prayer or the meaning of the product in some way, it's supposed to elevate us to the Lord and elevate our souls to the Lord and help us find that communion. And like Trey said, the bottom line is prayer. We're always trying to encourage people to build a prayer life and to seek a relationship with the Lord through prayer. Cause that's really what is transformative. And once we find that it's like, we find this little 
taste of heaven here on earth. Mm -hmm. And the more that we're able to meet the Lord in that intimate space of prayer, the more we're able to get a little taste of what it's going to be like one day. Sweet. I love it. So in this podcast, we're going to be talking about the home and establishing a Catholic identity in the home. And a lot of your guys' products at West Coast Catholic helps facilitate that. So, you know, we are all formed by what we consume or, you know, become what you eat. What's the saying? Is it, you? yeah, yeah you become what you eat type of deal. Okay. Yeah. But just yeah. in general, like what we, what we take in, you know, the music we listen to, the shows, how we, everything we take in forms us. Mm -hmm. And the home in general, I mean, that's where, that's where you live. You know, that's, so I think it's so interesting, particularly with this topic that we're going to talk about just the home and how actually like decorating your home or how you set it up, like how you, I don't know if you guys made this up, but like Catholify or something you did, what is it called? I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I made it up, but yeah, I had a series, I have a series called Catholify your home. And so I feel like the term has really stuck around. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it just popped up in my mind. I wasn't even planning <laughs> on saying that, but yeah. So, it, it so was, you know, we talk about, you know, we can talk about these things, but it actually affects who we are in our identity, particularly as Catholics. So mm -hmm. before we kind of dive into, you know, how a married couple or just a single person, whoever has a home or an apartment, wherever you live, how you can set that up to actually foster a deeper Catholic identity. First, I just want to ask you guys what you know, what would you say it means to actually have a Catholic identity or to be Catholic? Yeah, that's a great question, Brandon. Um, yeah, we are still figuring that out. I think every day is, uh, you know, we're learning more and more what that means. But I would say fundamentally, I would say what it means to be Catholic is one, recognizing your own brokenness and your own humanness. Uh, I think the, the best way that I've been able to resonate with this is actually through something that St. Paul said. I don't even know what, in what book, I think maybe Romans, but I can't remember, <laughs> but he says something along the lines of like, I can't do what I want and I always do what I don't want to do. And I think that's a very like human experience that we all feel. I know that I feel that very deeply. And so I think first it's recognizing that we are broken because it's not until you recognize your brokenness that then you can even acknowledge a need for a savior. And so then that's the second half of the coin is acknowledging the need for a savior and uh, recognizing that our savior is Jesus and that he did through the cross actually redeem us and then has given us the, the power and the grace through the Holy Spirit uh, to become like him. And like mm -hmm. that's ultimately the, the Christian journey is becoming like Christ. And so ultimately it's the gospel message is what is like what it means to be Catholic. Mm -hmm. And there are some like unique ways that we're able to live that out uh, through our Catholic faith, um, through the sacraments, through tradition, um, and all the teachings that I know that you were talking about. You yeah. want to share a little bit more about that, Mari? Yeah, no, I, I love what you were saying about the gospel message, because although that obviously is like the heart of all Christianity, I think what you were saying is so unique about us Catholics, just like recognizing our brokenness and also just um, in the, in the gospel. So we were missionaries with focus. And so we like, learned this like way to share the gospel. Right. And so it's like, um, if you want to help me out here, <laughs> you are, uh, in perfect relationship with the Lord, right. In the very beginning. Right. And then sin enters the world and there's this huge chasm that comes in. We like, we, we're sinful. There's this brokenness and it separates us from God. And all we long for is to like be back in that perfect union with God. But unfortunately, like in our humanist, there's nothing we can do to be like fully reconciled with the most perfect divine being. And so we clearly need a savior. So, so first of all, it's that acknowledgement of like, we need a savior and the Lord in his love and mercy and just like desire to be with us and united with us once more sends himself down in the form of his son to reconcile us. And the way, the reason that works is because Jesus is both fully human and fully God. And so in his humanness, he's able to repair, uh, he's able to like bear the weight of our sins, but because of his divinity, he's able to repair that infinite chasm that is between us and the Lord. Um, and he not only came 
to do that for us, to just save us, but actually to transform our lives. And that's what I love most about the gospel message. And that's where I kind of want to tie it into Catholicism a little bit, because while what I see a lot in Protestant Christianity is just um, the need to acknowledge that you're saved and that you have a savior and that's it. However, we as Catholics believe that both faith and work play a role in salvation. And in this gospel message that we share, we share that Jesus came to transform our whole lives. And so he not only just wants to like wipe us clean and be like, you're good. I I did the work for you, but he actually wants to change us inside out, to transform us, to change the way that we live and the way that we live those works that we do and that you see on the outside set us apart as Catholics. And as we were chatting a little bit about these questions before we got on, one thing that you said was that, um, At one point in time, all these people that were following Christ started to live very differently than everybody else, so much so that they had to give them a name to identify them, and they called them Christians. And they were like, you people that are so different and strange and are following this man, we're going to call you Christians. Um, And so I think that ties in a little bit to kind of this reflection on like faith and works and how like our works truly um, play a role in this. And I feel like is a foundational part about being Catholic and how that kind of ties into the church in a sense is really the sacramental life I feel like as well. And how as Catholics, we both follow and are guided by scripture and tradition and that like wholeness of the way that we practice our faith, um, really sets us apart in our Catholic identity and is something so beautiful that I feel like we're so blessed that the church has given us so many avenues to experience like this tangible faith. Do you want to talk more about sacraments at all? Yeah. I mean, it's the way that we're able to experience God. It's the gifts that the church has given us. Uh, So obviously because of our brokenness, like we can't achieve the salvation on our own. And so we have these wonderful gifts to help us along the way and to help us, like you were saying, Mari, to be transformed from the inside out to become like Christ. And so through confession, through the Eucharist, Mm -hmm. uh, those are like the primary sacraments that we can like receive weekly, monthly, uh, that help us on that road to salvation for sure. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. I, what was just coming to my mind was to like be Catholic. If we live the Catholic faith and truly let it sink in, we will become more fully ourselves and more fully Mm -hmm. human. You know, the, I believe as the Vatican two council said, you know, uh, that Christ, um, by the revelation of the mystery of the father father and his love for us fully reveals man to man himself and makes his supreme calling clear. But Christ himself is the man who's fully alive. Like he reveals yeah. what it means to be human. And I mean, I think the claim that we would make is to be Catholic is to actually be fully yourself to be mm-hmm. fully human, which is revealed in light of Christ. And, and that means, that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I just think I got that. And I think that, like if we are as Catholics supposed to be f- fully alive, like we should be attractive. Like we should have attractive lives that people are drawn to. And clearly Jesus did. That's why people were drawn to him. And if, if being Catholic is being fully alive in Christ, then like that should say something about that. The way that we live our life. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to hold in that sneeze. But- <laughs> I usually sneeze in twos, but I think we're good on just the one. You can keep one big one. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, that's all I was saying. Was I think in light of that, like we should live attractive lives. And I think I don't know. Maybe there's like ways that like we as Catholics can like improve that and like make this faith more attractive because of the way that we're living. Yeah, and I think. I just, I relate to that so much on a personal level, like what you were saying about like becoming like fully human, fully yourselves. And that's like equivalent to like the fullness of Catholicism, because in my life, when I fully embraced my Catholic faith and changed my life to be centered around Christ and the sacraments, like I became fully myself. And I remember like in that whole experience, like sharing with Trey and my friends of like, I have never felt more Mari in my entire life. I'm like, this is like, fully and upon unapologetically like who I am in every way. And I just experienced like the fullness of joy, the fullness of freedom, the fullness of peace, like in so many aspects, like in every aspect of my life. And it, and it's 
it wasn't truly until I like fully lived out my Catholic faith when I, when I felt that. So like, even just on a very personal human experience, like practical level, like that is so true. Yeah. Yeah. I, sorry, I just, my phone just dropped. (laughs) Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, and we're not saying, I want, I want to make this clear. We're not saying when you talked about Trey, like, Hey, we're called to be, you know, attractive and even beautiful. And therefore I'm going to wear this. We're not, you know, we're not right. being pharisaical in the sense of, you know, oh, Catholics are all about just the law and looking good, doing the works, mm-hmm. but inside, um, we're full of, ex, you know, extortion as, as Christ says, like, no, the, the outside reflects the inside, but the inside also reflects the, the outside. And, you know, so to be Catholic, you know, therefore we should act and behave in certain ways. Even if we don't want to at the time, we need a reordering. We need a retuning of our, of our hearts, you know, and, and I'm just thinking of like, okay, why do we dress modestly as Catholics? Well, because we believe that the human body has a great dignity and value. Uh, why do I, why am I going to love my neighbor? Well, well, Christ told me so, and because I'm most fully myself, most fully alive. So we can apply that now to just the home and lifestyle and even like, okay, and like decorating, setting up a home environment that's attractive, that's welcoming for people to come in, but also just yourselves and like living in it. So maybe we can kind of segue into the home, you know, why why is the home so important to fostering oneself and one's life and one's Catholic identity? Yeah. I love this topic. So I'm excited to to chat about it. Way more to say about this than me, I think. Um, You guys, you guys aren't saying like, Hey, you need to put up incense. So when people walk in, it's all foggy and smoky. No, I mean, are you, you're not saying anything like that. No, no, no. Um, no, but I love, I love this topic and your question, why is the home so important truly really comes from this idea of the domestic church. Um, and that's something that we believe as Catholics and that the church teaches that the primary, um, catechists of the faith start in the home. So like the, the parents, the guardians of the family in the home are the ones who have that primary responsibility to teach the children and to teach the family of the faith and pass down those traditions, um, those practices, and that love for the faith, um, that knowledge of the faith. And there's many different ways that we can do this. But I think once we recognize that, we recognize, first of all, that we have a responsibility to bring the church into our home. And I love this term domestic church. Like how are we bringing different pieces of the church, both in like practice and essence and both like physically, like aspects of the beauty of the church. How is that being represented in our home? Once we realize we have that responsibility, like we actually begin to do things and we don't think just like, oh, the priest on Sunday will raise my family in the faith. You know, hopefully my kids will get something out of the homily or like, hopefully like, you know, we'll just talk about the faith after like on the drive home from church and that'll be good. No. Once you really realize like the home is truly where faith is like fostered and nurtured and developed, you begin to recognize the weight of like what it looks like to really have a Catholic home. Like what are different ways that I can actually foster this in my home? And so um, I, there's, there's so many different ways to do that. And like you said, uh, physically like decorating for sure is one way that we love to bring the church into our home. Um, very simply like having a, like a home altar or like a prayer space, because that firstly nurtures you, like our marriage and our family is being nurtured through prayer in the home. And so whether that's like, we have our own spaces where we like to pray or having a crucifix up on a wall where we like to pray or prayer cards or a prayer candle, um, you can have it spread out around the house, but like, we really recommend like having a good place that like you consistently go pray to and kind of foster that environment, kind of like you would go sit in a chapel or a church. Um, and as well as, uh, like spiritually fostering those practices as a family, like having set aside time to pray and fostering like different ways to pray with each other or to have spiritual conversations, whether that be maybe reading the Sunday gospel together or doing a family rosary or just discussing, you know, topics of the faith over dinner or something. Those are little practical ways that you begin to 
bring the essence of the faith and the church into your home so that like your family and your, like the spiritual environment of your family is being fostered primarily in the home. They're being like, their cups are being filled in the home so that when they go out, it's clear that they're Christians. It's clear that they're Catholics and they're, they're going out into the world from a place of like being nourished spiritually and being formed in their faith. And they can stand firmly in their faith when they go out into the world. Um, I want to give you all a space to talk. Cause I'm like, I could keep going, but keep going. I want to know your <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> Brennan, go ahead. You got anything? Yeah. Well, I was, my mind went to Genesis for some reason, uh, where it reminded me that, okay, you know, St. Therese says, you know, the earth is, is thy ship, not thy home, you know, or, but my mind went to, okay. In Genesis, actually the picture of the garden of Eden and the whole universe, the cosmos is in, is temple imagery, actually God's dwelling, hmm. which is ultimately the temple and the Holy of Holies. It's where God dwells Genesis. It's where man and God walked with one another. And so the whole universe understood biblically is should be the dwelling place of the most high God kind of. Um, and then you take that to like a city, like how we should order architecture, like food and uh, society just as a whole should have everything orient ourselves to communion with God and vice yeah. versa. And my professor was, is just mad at the architecture that most people are building nowadays. Cause it's just, it all has to do with the dollar and efficiency and, uh, you know, so all that being said, so my mind went to Genesis, the universe cities and architecture, and then it went to the home of like, okay, you said it's the domestic church, which is a mini church that ultimately it's, it's a place where the family communes with God and God communes with the family. And then my mind went to theology, of the body stuff. Okay. What's the marriage bed, the Holy of Holies of the the house you know mm -hmm. it's it <laughs> that's just where, where my brain goes but and then i'm thinking like oh does that you know should should you know the bridal chamber be decorated in a way that's more holy i, I don't know that's where my mind was going no i love that i don't i mean but here's maybe a question that that i have for you guys is you know my mom in her home has crosses everywhere, like <laughs> everywhere. Like you go into the kitchen and there's crosses <laughs> circling the whole entire walls. And everyone knows that about my mom and my mom loves to decorate. But there, the home is also a place to welcome people who aren't Catholic at all or not don't believe in God at all. You know, it's also a place of evangelization. So is there a way where you can go too far with how you Catholify your home that makes people uncomfortable or you know like how i don't is there a middle ground of where where it's welcoming and they 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 feel welcome they feel oh there's something attractive here um to where uh they they're not feeling comfortable you're you're overdoing it you're hyper spiritualizing your home you know i don't know if you guys have any thoughts on that that is I have thoughts. an interesting question my first thought was Yes, you could overdo it. But then I'm thinking of like the the beautiful cathedrals all across the world, especially in Europe, the, the ones that are older and that are like huge tourist destinations. Like millions of people who don't believe in God are going into those hyper Catholic spaces that are beautiful. And like there is a reality I mean, this is what you love to talk about, like that beauty and what you talked about at the beginning is that beauty leads us to God. And there is a reality that the beauty of those spaces and these beautiful churches are leading people to Christ. Um, and, and people, whether they believe in God or not, objectively know yes. these are beautiful, sacred spaces. And that's why they're going all around the world to visit yeah. them. And yeah, and I think a lot of them would probably like recognize there's something different hmm about this space and maybe if they're not religious they won't be able to put like a finger on it but like even our one friend like walked into i've had this happen to two different friends that um i think i mean they do have faith but they like walk into a catholic church and they're like 
something is different here. I don't, I can't really like put a finger on it, but like, I do recognize that there is a difference here. Mm -hmm. And we're like, well, it's just the presence of Christ. And the yeah. Tabernacle. Those were Protestant friends who walked into a Catholic church and specifically said that they're like, I just feel different when I walk in to a Catholic yeah. church. And I was like, well, the beauty one leads us to that transcendental of heaven to the Eucharist is here. Yeah. So, <laughs> so to answer your question, like, you maybe could, if it's like, you could maybe overdo it and maybe you have thoughts on, <laughs> on that specifically for like decorating. But I think it's, it's more so the people inside the home, like, are they, is their personality is the way that they're interacting with the people walking into their home is like, is that overdoing it where they're over spiritualizing everything. They're like kind of shoving the faith down somebody's throat. It's like, that is way different of an experience. And I think the people in the home will make the experience more or less overbearing uh, than the actual home itself. But mm -hmm. I don't know. You have thoughts. Yeah. Well, I, I love the um, concept of like evangelizing with your home. And I mean, that's the essence of everything we do at West Coast Catholic and our products. Um, something that we, we don't use as like an official tagline, right? But it's kind of like, it's not your grandma's Catholic home, you know? It, it, it's designed in a way that is kind of a modern day aesthetic while keeping the rich beauty of tradition of the Catholic church. Um, and this is for people, you know, young families of today so that they can evangelize with their home so they can build their domestic church in a way that they resonate with, in the way that's attractive and beautiful to them. And although there is an innate beauty to these more traditional Catholic items, and some people, some young people today, like that might be their style still. That, that's totally fine and beautiful for that to be your style. Um, but we do have a more modern aesthetic in what we do in our brand precisely for this reason, for people to resonate with it that are young Catholics of today and to spark those conversations with the people you welcome into, into your home. So I'm going to talk about a lot of things. I'm, I'm going to hit all your points, but I'm going to get there. Um, so with these items, I mean, what we've seen is, you know, you have, we have a beautiful like concrete candle that's, uh, kind of the modern version of your classic like Guadalupe candle. It's like the vertical, like tall candle that usually has like all these like bright colors, which is very like traditional in like the Mexican culture and everything. Um, and I mean, you can find these candles like at the store for like yes, a dollar. Um, but it's like that iconic Catholic candle. Um, if you're more like me and you like a little bit more like muted neutral style, we made this candle in a beautiful, like concrete material. That's kind of like a cream color. And it's got the same vertical shape as that prayer candle. And it has an imprint of Guad our lady Guadalupe on the front. People walk in and they're like, oh my gosh, that candle is so beautiful. Like, what is it? And you have an opportunity to be like, oh, like this is a prayer candle. This is Our Lady of Guadalupe. Like we light it when we pray a family rosary. Or have you heard of the incredible story of the Tilma at Our Lady of Guadalupe? Um, those items allow for like these like sparks of conversation about the faith to enter the conversation in a very easy and natural way where you're not necessarily always the one opening the conversation of like, would you like to talk about the miraculous apparition in Guadalupe? Like <laughs> that's kind of weird. <laughs> and so one, yes, like there's so many beautiful ways to evangelize with our home. And I do think that as Catholics, like somebody who is not Catholic should walk into your home and know these people are Catholic. Again, like we are Christians and we are set apart and we're not supposed to blend in with the world. We're not supposed to like hide ourselves and mask ourselves to be relatable like everybody else. We are supposed to stand out and have kind of like a higher standard of like the way that we live and the way that um, we foster and nurture the faith in our homes. So I do think that like you should walk in and you should know it's a Catholic home. Now your question of like, can you overdo it? I think that honestly, like in my heart, I feel like the primary, the primary choice is like to nurture your family and to foster your family. And the home is more than just like a structure of like four walls. It's really like the sacred space where family life happens. And if usually the father of the home, the father provides like protection and the mother, like, you know, uh, gosh, there's like a saying, like, 
you provide protection and I like bring like love into the home or whatever. It's like he provides and she like makes it beautiful, makes it a beautiful space to be in and to gather. And so like if the mother of the home or the wife of the home has like chosen to create this environment in that way, like your mom, like putting the crosses, like all across the kitchen, or I've seen people have like the, the crucifix walls and they buy a crucifix wherever they go. And it's this like giant mural of crucifix. That was my mom. You you haven't seen it because that was before we did a remodel, but in the kitchen, there was like one huge wall (laughs) that was just covered with crucifixes. And I think like, if that's the choice, I don't want to, I don't want to say like, you're overdoing it because it's coming from a place of genuine faith and love and like wanting to express that in the home. Um, but I love what Trey was saying about like, how, how is your posture and your interactions with people around you that aren't Catholic? How is that being inviting while still being strong in your Christian faith at the same time? How are you opening conversation in just very normal ways, very casual ways that then give you opportunities to build trust, to build friendship, to lead into sharing about what your experience was at mass on Sunday and what you, what you got from the homily or sharing what your prayer life has been recently, or maybe like a God moment that you had while you were like trying to discern something and make a decision, um, building those relationships, establishing that trust and that friendship, I feel like is really important when you're evangelizing because it's going to be be received so much better. Um, and so much less of like skepticism that you just have an agenda, but instead you're like, Oh, I love this person. I understand that like the faith is really important to them. So like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hear what they have to say about it because it's important to them. And I love this person as a friend. Um, so I, I hope that kind of answers the questions. Like, yes, super important to have items in your home that express your Catholic faith and that welcome a conversation and evangelize almost without you having to do much. But then at the same time, I think the way that you interact with people that you're in, inviting into your home almost matters more. Yeah. What comes to mind with when you're saying that is like, the tool will never replace the action. Like the tools that you're using in your home, the decorations are never going to replace the action of evangelizing. Like that, mm-hmm. that is done human to human. Um, so their tools are helpful, but they can't replace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Do you guys have like, well, the, the one thing I loved what you said, Maury was, you know, people should know just by walking into your home that this is who they are. They're, they're Catholic. Like, and so often, you know, I remember back in like high school, it's like, I wouldn't do the sign of the cross at when I'm having lunch or, yeah. if, you know, why? Because, well, someone's going to make a comment. Someone's going to judge me. And, you know, I think that's something we all should reflect on is like, is my social media accounts is do my classmates do, do people know just by how I present myself that this is who they are and what they're about. And especially the home, you know, are people walking in and not, whoa, this person's radical or uncomfortable, <laughs> get, get uncomfortable, but okay. There's something welcoming, but yes, I know that they're Catholic. Do you guys have like, do you guys have an example or a story? Maybe it's just even between yourselves, whether it's something that you've done within your home to, um, to cultivate that Catholic identity or ultimately to cultivate that union with God like whether it's like a crucifix, maybe, maybe you're going to bed at night and you're tired, you feel desolate and you saw the crucifix in your home and all of a sudden it gave you hope. And, or was there someone who maybe you invited a friend into your guys's home and just how you guys have arranged your house and who you are, where it actually um, aided in a deeper encounter with that person's faith. I mean, do you guys have any, any example or story that you could share? Yeah. Before you share a story, I'm just going to share a separate story that is not related to us. <laughs> but when we first moved to this neighborhood, <laughs> we, we were meeting our neighbors across the street. And somehow it came up pretty naturally. They probably asked us what we do for work. And then it's like, okay, well, now you're Catholic. Yeah. Uh, so that's just a funny side note. Like anytime anybody asks us what we do for work, then they'll immediately know we're Catholic. It's like impossible. <laughs> oh, what do you do? We own a Catholic lifestyle brand. Yeah, it's impossible for us to hide that we're Catholic anyways, because yeah. everything we do is related to the faith. But anyway, so the neighbor is like learns that we're Catholic and he's like, Oh, like you're gonna like the neighbors like 
three houses down that way. Like they were like one day I saw so much smoke coming out of their house that I called the fire department on them because I thought their house was on fire. And so like I ran over there to check to make sure that their house wasn't on fire. And it turns out they were just doing like a house blessing, but we're going hard on the incense <laughs> for the house. <laughs> like so much incense could you imagine the amount of incense that had to have been in that house like, for it to come out of like the windows incense where the neighbor ran over to check to make sure everything was okay they're filipino catholics and i think i i don't know where we heard this and this may be true may not be true but that like that's pretty common in like filipino catholic household blessings like they do like i think he said like black incense like it was like I intense incense <laughs> But so anyways, they obviously you can you know that that house is now. <laughs> the whole neighborhood knows. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was pretty funny. Um what I was going to say, yes, a few experiences. One, I love the crucifix and this is just because the past few years the Lord has taught me in a whole new way what suffering is and I never in my life really had experienced suffering. And so looking at a crucifix has a whole like new meaning to me. Like, and truly I feel like that is so innate to Catholicism. Like we're often like poked fun at for like being the ones that are always about suffering, but I'm like, no, but you don't understand. It's so tra transformational. <laughs> like it's good. And so having a crucifix in your home in several places in your home has honestly made an impact on me personally. I think of two things that come to mind. One in our bedroom, we have a crucifix that's on the wall where like our, our bed is up again. So like right above us. And every morning when I wake up, I open my eyes and I see the crucifix on the wall. And that reminds me to do a quick morning offering. And I notice sometimes we use that crucifix for photos because it's the one that we have in our shop and everything. And sometimes I'll take it down to like take a quick video and I'll forget to put it up the next day. And I notice that when I, when it's not there, I forget. And when it is there, I wake up and I'm reminded this like today is the Lord's day that he's given me. I'm going to offer my day to the Lord. And I thank him for a good night of rest for another day of life. And I offer my day to the Lord. So a simple reminder of that my life is centered around Christ and that my, when I open my eyes, the first thing I see is Jesus on the cross. And then we have a crucifix in the kitchen, which is helpful for me because I hate doing dishes. And so for me, it's like a reminder that like our vocation is the most beautiful thing. And at the same time, it's our cross. Like our vocation is our path to heaven. And just like the Lord opened the gates of heaven through the cross, like, so will we reach heaven hopefully one day through our own crosses. And your vocation comes through many little ways of dying to yourself when you're when you're married, of dying to your selfishness and your own desires and thinking of your spouse before yourself and doing the things you don't want to do out of love for your spouse. And so putting the crucifix in the kitchen where so much life happens, where chores are to be done, where cleaning is to be done, where um, conversations happen and just so much is going on. It's a reminder to me of like, my vocation is dying to myself and serving and loving my husband. And that's like, even just for me, it's transformational and not even, that wasn't even a story of like somebody entering my home, but just even for me, that's like very edifying for my faith. <sighs> so another story is we have a friend that like has entered our home before who's Protestant and we have these like rosaries around our house because we have a lot of rosaries in our house. Um, and it, those always kind of draw attention because they're these like beautiful beads and we have them displayed like in our coffee table and in our front table. And so often people who aren't Catholic, like will come in like grab it and just be like, wow, like this is so beautiful. And, and a lot of times they know what a rosary is. And a lot of times they don't. And I've had the same experience. Even recently, I went to coffee with another friend who's Protestant and she saw on Instagram that I did something with rosaries and she like asked if I had one, she like wanted to see it. And it's the same experience every time of like, wow, this rosary is so beautiful. Like these beads, like, and they're not Catholic, but they're like, can I, like, can I pray it? Like as a Christian, can I pray a rose? Is that allowed? Like, can I do that? Like, I want one. And so again, I think it just draws that, that tie of like beauty draws us to God. And that's just like a simple example of how like a beautiful rosary in our home or in my purse, um, kind of drew that connection for someone to Catholicism that maybe like wouldn't have had that connection before. That's awesome. So what, 
what would you say just to kind of to wrap this up what would you say are like the basics practical basics of what a person can do or you know parents couple that they could do in their home to it's funny this catholifies now in my head but to catholify the home what are just some basic uh practicals kind of like step one this is what what you need mm. Trey, do you want to say anything or do you want me to just go this is all you okay this is your dominion um first thing i would have your home blessed by a priest so i would have your priest at the parish um invite him over for dinner one night and invite him to bless your home um and then i would put up a crucifix and some holy water um it's important to mark our homes physically with like the statement of whose we are um and we are christ so come in bless your home have holy water and a crucifix in your home and i would say like that's your bare minimum that I would say that you need. Um, you can always have it in multiple places. We have holy water in our entryway table that's close to the front door. And then we have holy water on our bedside as well so that we can pray with it. If we want to bless each other with holy water before bed, or we're going on a trip or something and we want to bless our home or bless our travels or whatever. Um, those are very practical things to do. And then, I mean, if you want to, elevate it. Uh, next step I would say is like have a home altar or a prayer space again to like cultivate that personal relationship with God, because that's where you're going to find that transformation is through that prayer, through that personal relationship with God. So this can look many different ways. Some people have just like a shelf and they have a prayer candle and maybe a crucifix or a rosary or an image of Mary. Um, some people like to do like a little like table um, kind of like an altar, almost like, like a table when they put a little tablecloth on it and they have all the things, um, you could just do like a prayer wall, um, where you like put different pictures up. Uh, you can even put a shelf up on the prayer wall, but you have your Marian image, your statue, uh, maybe you hang up a rosary, um, having a prayer space where you can go and be with the Lord is very important. And that will too make you want to pray more. If you have a mm -hmm. spot that you enjoy that's like set up for that it'll encourage you to pray more mm -hmm. practically yeah um and we recommend having like a family bible um so like we have a few like big bibles um and i i mean i'm working I, I still need to get the little like table that I want to do this downstairs, but I really want to like buy like a little Bible, like display, like a little like stand where you can lay the Bible like open. Um, and I think that will also invite more opportunities to pray with scripture as a family. If you have that like outwardly displayed. So your basics, crucifix, holy water, Marian image, um, Bible and prayer candle. That's five. Well, and yeah, you can have the, the rosary sitting out somewhere visible. in the rosary yes then i'll just remind you to pray as a family yeah that's great i want to just share one thing about holy water because so often i and others we don't realize the power of holy water and actually what it has especially if you're catholic you dip it in every time you go to right. mass it's like, oh it's just water that i just do this ritualistic thing so i have a friend whose spiritual director uh can see uh angels and demons you know, wow. has that, has that gift. And, um, he told her a story about this young, these young college students were experiencing crazy things happening in their house, some demonic stuff, you know, whether it's pictures flying off the walls or, and they called up the priest, Hey father, we need you, your help. Come on. We're scared. We need you. <laughs> so the priest goes in and he starts doing holy water in every single room. Yeah, the bedroom, the living room, he goes to every single room. The final one is the laundry room. He sprinkles the holy water, whew, a demon shoots by him, do, 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 bounces every room and shoots back out the door. And no one else saw it but him. We're just oh. like, whoa. Yeah, oh my God. yeah, it shoots past him. And the holy water made the demon basically like just scatter throughout the whole. And then it's like, oh, this whole place is filled with holy water. So they went out the door. Got to go. Wow. And it's, yep. Yeah. I remember. I, and then I, uh, I traveled once with Christopher West for one of his made for more events. At, mm -hmm. And we went to a hotel. I stayed, obviously, I was in a different room. He was in another room. And he knocks on my door at night right before I'm going to bed. And he's like, do you have holy water? 
And I was like, no. And and he had some. He's like, you need it. And he starts spraying it in my room. He's like, you have no idea what's happened in here. And he starts spraying it. And then he left. And it was like a reminder for me of like, okay, even if I'm like traveling, like that's something I should do and what I should yeah. have. So, yes. so that's, yeah, holy water is powerful. But any any final thoughts from the both of you yes. uh, before we conclude? <laughs> two, or, two final thoughts, hence okay. why. Okay my number one thing was get your house blessed as like, if you've never gotten your house blessed or if it's been a long time since you've gotten your house blessed, like a hundred percent do that. Cause the priest does that. He goes around and he, uh, puts holy water everywhere. And sometimes even like blessed salt, um, which I think has other meanings, but I don't fully understand the blessed salt yet. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say was, uh, Trey, do you want to talk about it? The holy water spritzer, your genius idea. You can share why it's so, so great, though. <laughs> well, okay, for the longest time, Trey had told me, like, at West Coast Catholic, like, we have to launch this, like, holy water spritzer, like, a small, like, spritzer that you can take holy water with you. And I don't know why. I was just like, I don't know, Trey. Like, I don't know if that's going to, like, do the best. Like, I don't know if, like, that's really going to land well. And and we did it. And it is one of our top best sellers. It's a small little travel-sized holy water bottle that look kind of, if you're a woman, you would know like a, like a travel perfume bottle. It's got like a little spritzer at the top and uh -huh. you, it's like, you can travel with it cause it's less than three ounces. Like you can put it in your purse, in your car, in your bag. And that's like the exact, an exact situation when you could use it, Brendan, where you, you're going on a trip and you got to bless yeah. your Airbnb or your hotel or whatever. Yeah, or yeah. You go like, you put on like perfume yeah, or cologne. On, like cologne. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with reverence okay but yeah, yes yeah. um or like if you're a mom and you're like spritzing your kids like with holy water uh, while they're out the door to go to school you know you do a little sign of the cross a little holy water go um there's so much power in holy water and i so resonate with what you said as the catholics we just like we've been around it so much and it's such a mundane thing i feel like for cradle catholics that like we don't recognize the power of it but it is very powerful and highly encourage you to have it around you in your home and uh, grab a holy water spritzer so you can travel with it as well. Awesome. So I, I like it. Everyone go check out the holy water spritzers <laughs> and get yourself a, a spritzer. <laughs> uh, so where can, if they, if, if people want to get involved with what you guys are doing, uh, where would they, where would you, where would they go? Yeah. So our website is westcoastcatholic.co. Um, and then you can find me on Instagram at mari.c.wagner. That's my personal blog or the shop is at West Coast Catholic. And then if you want to hear more of my voice, if you're not sick of it yet, you can go tune into the podcast. It's called the Everbe podcast and it's a Catholic lifestyle podcast. Um, so that is Everbe on Spotify, Apple podcasts, all that kind of things. And then we have an Instagram for that too, at Everbe podcast. Awesome. Thanks, Trey Mari, for coming on the Heights podcast. Yeah, Appreciate thanks, Brendan. Appreciate it.